what was that uh, that journey like? How did you get yanged, and you know, how did you, what was the thought process? Yeah, so I got yanged um, at the hardware store. So a bunch of my so I'm usually to the left of the people in the hardware store, and mm -hmm. uh, they were talking about the Democratic debates in in July, and they were just making fun of the whole process and you know, kind of ribbing it. And uh, one of the guy goes, one of you know the people that work for me goes. Uh, um, and I respect his opinion quite a bit. And I thought he was make, uh, just making a joke, but he goes, there's only one guy I like, and he's that that Asian guy that uh, wants to give everybody money. <laughs> and so so I went home and I did my research, and I think it started actually on your channel. And uh, But Yang had put out like hours and hours of long form um, pieces. And really, you could tell that this guy, he was normal. He was a regular problem solver. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, you know, and he had spent his time thinking about, okay, what would it really take to to make life better for all of us? And and I have never really seen that in a political candidate. So it activated me. Um, you know, we all have political opinions where it's like, ah, this this sucks, that sucks. These these people are terrible. But uh, seeing Yang, so him and I are similar ages, and you know, we've had different experiences, but. You know, I saw a lot of what he was talking about in everything that I've done. Mm -hmm. And so to me, that really activated, okay, so this is something that could truly, truly change things. So I supported the campaign. I had a um, UBI rally in Stevensville, which was me, uh, the, you know, uh, putting in a bunch of flags on my F-150 and then going up and down the street. And then I took it to Missoula. It was pretty fun. Um, but, you know, I, I see it as one of those things where I started, you know, I did the research, you know, me and my wife, we kind of, it, it bonded us together. And then, um, you know, so that and the six people in my family and, and, uh, then people at the hardware store, but I knew it really had momentum when I was, uh, sitting in a group of my, uh, family members, we were together for, for my, for a birthday or something like that. There was like 12 people in the room. And I was wearing my math hat and, and we're a pretty lively bunch, you know, from diverse backgrounds. And there's there's a lot of politics and religion being discussed all the time. And they had asked me about, you know, what does math mean? And I was like, let me tell you, you know, and, <laughs> and I sold I sold an entire room within the span of like 30 minutes. They were like smiling. They were like, oh, wow, this is this is a really good thing. And I knew that this was different than anything I'd ever talked about before just with its ability to touch people. So. Totally. Yeah, I remember I had um, dinner with a bunch of uh, former uh, grad school classmates and lots of Republicans. Uh, and we were talking about the race. And at that time, Yang was still in it. Mm -hmm. And it was interesting in that of all of the Democratic candidates, most of the Republicans in the around the table were would not even consider mm -hmm. uh, supporting any of them. They were just like, "Oh, it's you know a bunch of clowns and not really, you know, haven't thought through their proposals." Da da da. Mm -hmm. But then when we got to Yang, it was interesting. Like these were like pretty uh, big time kind of hedge fund types, mm -hmm. and they're like, you know that his stuff actually kind of makes sense. Mm -hmm. And in interestingly enough, but my, my Republican friends, they're more like, um, you know, they're like nineties Republicans. Mm -hmm. They're not like 2020 Republicans. Right. They're not Trump Republicans. Right. Yeah. And so they're very into economics and efficiency and uh, allocation of resources and minimizing bureaucracy. Right. And so for them, the freedom dividend is fantastic. It's like, yeah, right. why should we have these huge like government bodies? Like, let's just put power and resources in the hands of the people. They're, they, you know, kind of touches the libertarian side of everybody. Uh -huh. um, but what's I feel like the Republican Party today is not like the Republican Party that I grew up with. Right. Um, it's not the Alex P. Keaton party at all. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> right for any of the older folks watching and, and know that. Yeah, that used, to be, that used to be on every day at three o'clock when I got home from school. That's right. Yeah. That's right. Be yeah, it's been Wall a long Journal. time since I've heard Alex P. Keaton brought up. But yeah. <laughs> he was yeah. a childhood hero of mine. Right, and, right. 
And because, you know, like he, he thought through stuff, he, he prided himself in knowing the numbers and he would like really get into details. Uh But I feel like today's Republican party, you know, the party of Trump, let's just say, Mm -hmm. is more visceral. It's more emotional. It's actually the way I remember Republicans in the nineties would talk about Democrats. Right. 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 Like, oh, Democrats are bleeding hearts. They don't really think through their plans. And now you've got uh, a Republican Party that, you know, is led by someone who isn't isn't really into the details. Mm -hmm. And you've got a Republican Senate that at a minimum is just enabling that kind of behavior. Yeah. I'm just curious, like, what's your take on the state Uh, of the party? Yeah, that was my final straw. Um as far as where the Senate is. Um, so the, the impeachment mattered to me as far as I think separation of powers is a pretty big deal. And um, so I had uh, wrote my senator um, during the trial. So I, I kind of got sucked into it. I watched pretty much every minute. And so when it came to the start, uh, the floor votes um, for subpoenas of documents and witnesses, mm-hmm. that's the first time I reached out. And to me, uh, there's no case for acquittal if you're not not running a, a good trial. So I was already disappointed that there wasn't, you know, cause I read the transcript and it only takes about, you know, 15 minutes if that to read it. And I thought that there was enough information to at least merit a couple of uh, Republican yeah. votes in Congress. And um, by the time I got to the Senate, I thought that at least a few people would support doing this seriously. So it, um, it was very concerning for me because uh, there's a couple of historical references that are are scary and uh i I hope we're not there but i don't want to set up a system that would allow um fascism or or anything else and we're going through some challenging economic times now so if we don't really fix this in a hurry uh we're open to some some pretty big problems yeah i mean that i totally agree with you that uh that whole impeachment thing was super interesting because I remember, um, I guess now it's like five or six years ago, there was a huge, 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 huge uproar over Obama having a lot of executive orders. Yes, absolutely. And mm-hmm. saying, you know, it's not, it's a republic. You know, he doesn't understand the founding fathers, the genius of the co-equal branches Mm -hmm. and now he can't get anything done in the congress so he's just writing these executive orders and is this obvious like you know this uh kind of emperor like abuse of power and then none of that seemed like that whole line of thinking went out the door and then even before that i remember the tea party Mm -hmm. talking about balancing budgets and Mm -hmm. fiscal responsibility and I just feel like Trump has just kind of like uh, changed the whole game and sure. everything that was sacred, all of like the core values of the party have been thrown out the window. Yeah, they, I think they're just walking over to where they think the base is, uh, where they think that the votes are. And um, I think that that they're throwing the party away when they uh, go down that long tail, you know, and try to get those really far right voters. I think that they're we need to have messages that actually come from the center. And I think we need to be more independent of, of corporate uh, influence as well, because uh, the corporations are running the establishment of both parties and the Democratic, or I'm sorry, the Republican Party has a really big issue right now with just a lack of sort of, not even sort of, it's, it's a lack of like individual conviction. Does that make sense? So. Yeah. We don't really have a McCain sitting there. I mean, I guess we got a little Mitt Romney sitting there um, trying to uh, be the voice of dissent. And then like Justin Amash, when he peeled off, I, you know, that I found that pretty, pretty interesting um, as far as he's, he's able to have an independent voice. And I thought more people were going to gravitate towards, you know, what he was doing and, I've just been shocked <laughs> over the last three years. It feels like we all got a, a little bit of PTSD, but yeah, it's, uh, I do feel like losing McCain was a big loss for the country. Yeah. Um, you know, 
I I did not support him when he was running for president. I I was very troubled by his vice presidential presidential choice. <laughs> what uh, do you mean? I mean, come on, that was <laughs> such a normal normal choice, right? Right, right, right. That's right. what happens when you throw a dartboard. Be like, okay, well, we want somebody that's like this, you know? Yeah, yeah. Like, I mean, that was a that was a hail mary, clearly. Mm -hmm. Um, but I do, I do appreciate, I did like him when he was running against George W in the primaries back. Yeah, you know, actually, uh, it, I, I, I could have seen that would have brought a whole new, new world of Republicans into the party. Um, yeah. and then if he would, have, it, if you remember the primaries from that season, that's when I really, that's when I discovered that the establishment was so terrible. 